The 2020 state budget is modified to check the ravaging effects of the novel coronavirus pandemic. A 180 billion CFA France special fund is created to trace COVID-19 cases and to provide care for vulnerable groups and street children. Disposing items used for the care and treatment of COVID-19 cases preoccupies health experts as they pose a threat to contaminations, medical personnel prescribe caution in their management. Health districts are equipped with surgical beds and medical equipment to store the spread of the coronavirus as persons of goodwill continue to reach out with face masks and other protective kits for the population. Good evening, thanks for joining us. Those were the headlines of the 730 News. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. The 2020 state budget, modified by presidential ordinance, reduces from 4,951.7 billion CFA francs to 4,409 billion CFA francs. The drop is warranted by the fact that the state is seeking budgetary assistance as well as loans from multilateral and bilateral partners. This will enable it to meet up with its socio-economic and financial objectives of the year. Iwan Nepole looks at the impact of this change on projects earmarked for 2020. In addition to being well above the 3% deficit threshold imposed by the CEMAC convergence criteria, the budget deficit officially estimated at 986.6 billion CV francs, representing 4.5% of GDP, projected in Cameroon in 2020 following the impact of the coronavirus, puts the country in a delicate situation with the International Monetary Fund, IMF. This will eventually affect the economic sector. Statistics of international trade shows that there is a decrease of about 25%, even though there is a difference between one country and another. Due to this global economic situation likely to move Cameroon into recession, most of the development projects, like the construction of roads, extension of electricity lines and pipe bond water, among others, earmarked for the 2020 fiscal year may not be realized. The impact here will be the prolongation of the execution of the projects because of the reduction of the budget. Government is, however, trying to protect the enterprises in order to avoid the budget deficit to witness another drop. According to international audit and consulting experts amending the finance law of June 3, 2020, will surely be an obstacle to industrialization and investment, which the country badly needs in order to develop and reduce unemployment. The budgetary constraints brought about by the presidential ordinance has led to the reduction of the budgetary allocations of all ministries. Finance officials explain that they are expected to work in solidarity to ensure that a contagious virus is effectively eradicated in the country. Clarice Aray Takan reports on the way forward. The budgetary cutbacks saw some administrations and services left with resource constraints of 60 million CFA francs less and others which will have to function with as much as billions of CFA francs reduced from their initial budgets. Amongst the sectors impacted in a big way are water and energy, health, public works, housing and urban development and economy. They will have to review investment priorities as related funds have been greatly modified. Meanwhile, the education domain, which remains at the heart of government action, was not spared with budgets of administrations in charge of basic, secondary and higher learning equally downsized. Social sectors, for their part, witnessed a negligible drop in their 2020 overall budget compared to others. 
the aim being to enable them attain their goal of promoting the social well-being of the population. Furthermore, at the judicial or territorial administration levels and others in between, such as trade, finance, defense and external relations, budgetary modifications have also been observed. They range from 1.9 billion CFA francs less to 10 billion CFA francs eased from the sports financial package. A number of specialized departments have not been left out of the budgetary review whose objective is to adapt the 2020 finance law to the coronavirus context. The downscale has been described as inevitable with solidarity put forward to enable the government effectively check the spread of COVID-19 nationwide and its socio-economic repercussions. Dropping the state budget by 11%, the presidential ordinance provides for a 180 billion CFA francs dedicated as special fund to contain the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Luma Slim Davis in the following report looks at the special fund that will, amongst others, cover sanitary expenses related to tracing COVID-19 cases. While the number of persons affected by the COVID-19 disease continue to rise in the country, the government, with a commitment to fight the spread of the pandemic, has revised the 2020 budget, according to an ordinance signed by the head of state on June 3, 2020. The National Solidarity Fund, dedicated to minimize the pandemic, stand at over 180 billion CFA francs. The initial budget therefore moved from 4,951 billion francs to 4,400 billion francs. Principally, this solidarity fund is put at the disposal for government's validated strategy to fight the pandemic. Expenditure is on sanitary issues linked to barring the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Here, we talk of testing for the disease, overhead cost of caring for patients, sanitary gadgets, and social regulatory administrative measures. Vulnerable persons affected by the sanitary crisis will also be taken care of. Away from the presidential ordinance, a makeshift isolation center with a capacity of 60 beds has been constructed in the East region to cater for COVID-19 cases. Built by the Africa Humanitarian Action Group and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the structure is intended to decongest the bed to a regional hospital already overwhelmed with persons infected with the coronavirus. Tala LT tells us more. The increasing number of COVID-19 patients in the town of Betwa has made the regional hospital too small to contain these sick persons, thus provoking the need for an emergency unit to reduce the pressure being exerted on the structure. Actually, we have uh, uh, the, the world faced to one pandemic, COVID-19, and uh, in the eastern region, the number is still increasing, and the hospital region I don't have the capacity to take care of these patients. So that's why AHA, uh, with the collaboration of uh, NACA, rehabilitate this warehouse uh, so that it can be an expansion of a uh, regional hospital. The structure, which for now serves as the annex of the Betel Regional Hospital, found in the locality of Manju, was erected thanks to Africa Humanitarian Action and the United Nations High Commission for Refugees at a cost of 12 million CFA francs. With a capacity capacity of 60 beds, the hospital has power supply, television sets, portable water, a standby generator, a borehole with a reservoir, a pharmacy, a refectory for health personnel, toilets and a waste disposal unit. The annex of the Beth Original Hospital has an intensive care unit with 8 beds which once operational will be equipped with the necessary medical appliances. Although this structure will be run by the Beth Original Hospital, the Africa Humanitarian Action and the United Nations High Commission for Refugees have promised to assist with necessary human resources. The fight against the coronavirus continues throughout the national territory with infected persons receiving treatments provided both by governments and individuals. An example is a medication approved by Archbishop Samuel Kleder being distributed in some regions. In Yaoundé, the Catholic Health Centre in Kongwa, where Elixir COVID or ATSA COVID are supplied, is below demand. Yoti Kalilisonga reports on the rush for the precious cure that has relieved quite a couple of persons. 
From the parking lot, it's easy to tell there's a crowd here of people waiting to be called up by these health personnel. Ash Bishop Samuel cleared as collaborators at the Catholic Health Center in Kongwa, Yaoundé. Some are either morose or cheerful. The emotion notwithstanding, there's a protocol to follow. Roll call for the 170 already on the waiting list for either Elixir COVID or ADSA COVID. The demand is very high concerning the, the need of the people. And every planning that we, we do, we have a rest, rest of people who have not get the products. And sometimes we take the document in order to provide for the, the next time. And in the next time, we have new people who come to take the product. We cannot give for all of, of them. Those who have already used the medication attest that it cures. I was tested COVID-19 positive. And after taking this product, two days after, I was feeling very nice. I'm sure that uh, after the seven days of treatment, the test will be negative, and I can confirm that this product has something, something miraculous. Unfortunately, not all COVID-19 patients report to the Clara team as expected. After 14 days, they have to, to do again the, the test and give off the, the, the response. But... Unfortunately, it's very difficult for the people. Sometimes they send a message, yes, thank you, I feel well known, but to bring the paper is very difficult for, for us. And we need it because it helps us in the follow-up in order to, to attest the, the, the efficiency of the product. The doors, however, remain open to accommodate those who either want to get tested for COVID-19 or need treatment, which is only given to those infected with the coronavirus. And as the rush for treatments continues in Kungwa and other Catholic health centers, the disposal of medical equipment used on COVID-19 patients by medical personnel is preoccupying environmentalists and health experts as it poses a threat to human existence. While ensuring that they do not lead to further infections, these items workers recommend should be handled in a manner that protects humans and nature. Alice Mbei was at the Jamo Hospital in Yaoundé to find out some of the measures taken. These are the waste buckets where protective materials and medical equipment used to administer treatment to the COVID-19 patients are dumped after usage. When the, the rest of food, we take it from where the patient is hospitalized with the contaminated solution of chlorine and put it in the bucket. But when health personnel take care of patients, what they call uh, infectious waste, they put it in the wet bucket here. The waste products are first disinfected before dumped into the waste bins. To keep the environment and health personnel safe from the COVID-19 pandemic, the waste products are transported to the incinerator for burning. When we take them to the incinerator, as you can see behind me, we have to separate them. There are some hot and there are some that they are soft. We have now to uh, prepare our incinerator for the incineration, 1,200 degrees centigrade. Staff in these units work on an eight-hour shift basis and the services operational 24 hours on 24. After each service, the nurses are disinfected and the protective materials removed and dumped in the bins. Incineration is done every day as from 6 p.m. Away from sensitization and how to properly dispose used medical kits, health districts in the North region have been equipped with COVID-19 protective gears to bounce back the virus in the area. The materials offered by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Mbairobe, were handed over to the North Regional Delegates for Public Health as we hear this report by Wilson Mengole. The anti-COVID-19 kits donated by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Mbairobe, to boost effort in the fight against the pandemic in the north, are notably for the health districts of Garwa 1, Tiwi, Ngong and Gide, that have been hit hardest by COVID-19. The Minister would soutenir les efforts du gouvernement. The Minister wish to continue what the government is doing. Coronavirus is not one man's affair. It should be booted out of the region. Hors de la région du Nord. A humanitarian gesture 
much appreciated by residents and local officials, especially as COVID-19 cases in the region have increased in recent weeks. Today, we are counting 119 confirmed cases, 11 deaths and 48 recoveries. This kit will really be of great help to us. The wish of the population of the north is for the pandemic to be booted out of the region and the country as a whole. A significant amount of anti-COVID-19 material has also been donated to schools in the southwest region to keep pupils safe as they prepare for official examinations. The gesture is initiated by the Ministry of Secondary Education and the United Nations Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF. Charles Abono reports on the official handing of the items in the southwest region. The anti-COVID-19 items and equipment donated by MINISEC and UNICEF include thousands of face masks, hand sanitizers, cartons of washing soap, liquid soap, disinfectants, hand washing kits, spraying cans, and a host of others. The Southwest Regional Delegate of Secondary Education, Dr. Hannah Etondembwa, officially handed over the items to divisional delegates delegates and some principals. The divisional delegates and school heads are expected to ensure the proper use of the items and equipment donated as well as accountability to the donors. We must show documents that prove that these things that have come down to our region, that our students and our teachers and our school administrators are making use of them. The school heads believe that the items items and equipment donated would greatly boost against the COVID-19 in their institutions. We we'll use it judiciously and it will go a long way to send this thing, COVID-19, away. Students are soon going to write the exams, so I'm going to make sure these gifts are going to be put in place to ensure that no child is affected. The school heads have promised to properly use the anti-COVID-19 items and equipment given to them. Hospital in Kongsamba has received a special donation of beds, surgical equipment and protective kits for the proper functioning of the unit. The donation from the head of state, Paul Beer, is intended to improve on the quality of services offered to the population and to adequately equip the health district as it tackles the coronavirus. Rosalind Fossa has the details from CRTV Littoral in Douala. It is a win of change and improvement in performance that is blowing across the Konsamba Regional Hospital. This health institution has joined the list of those benefiting from the largesses of the head of state, Paul Bia. This time around, there are 30 beds and mattresses plus 100 mosquito nets destined to welcome coronavirus patients in this hospital. But the donation goes beyond that as it will also reinforce the surgical capacity of the health institution thanks to the nine surgical packs. We are talking here of an X-ray equipment. You can imagine how it is important in a hospital. We also have three medical ultrasound packs, which means that each of our services will be enriched with one. We have also received beds for COVID-19 patients. Why handing over these special gifts of the head of state, the senior division officer for the Mongo recommended professionalism and collaboration with the population who are the first beneficiaries of the equipment. These gifts will permit uh, us to face the pandemic and uh, in my name in the name of the whole population we are proud to receive this gift and we say thank you to the head of state the donation comes at a time when the hospital has just welcomed its new director who says the gesture is a blessing and encouragement for the Konsamba regional hospital to stand as one of the best in the country The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice.
weeks into the reopening of schools in the basic and secondary education sectors, learners and instructors are burning the candlelight to complete their syllabus before the end-of-year examinations. The majority of lessons are dedicated to revisions of the work covered during the last four sequences. Romeo Kenny reports on the teaching pattern done in the strict respect of barrier measures. June 12 marks two weeks schools have been open to learners in examination classes. Here at Government High School Kozwa, like in other schools in Yaoundé, students express enthusiasm. We are 24 in class, I are seated after one bench. So I am seated, there is there's a space behind me and someone is seated behind me. Under the circumstances of the new normal imposed by coronavirus, a preve de philosophie for terminals and a pre mock for form fives and opposites, all pre examination tests are going on. We are very satisfied uh, because all of the teachers and the students are present. They are mobilized to give their best. They come to school, they respect uh, the social distanciation. Some, some st uh, teachers who are not finished their program have to continue to finish it. It is a similar mobilization in primary schools preparing for the first school leaving certificate and its equivalent in French. Okay, for the past two weeks, we have been making sure that we complete our program and we have been doing revision. Everywhere we have wash hand buckets that uh, the school authority provided for any visitor coming in to wash their hands first with soap. The children to in, the, in front of each class, we have wash hand buckets. These class six pupils via a song remind everyone to observe sanitary measures before and after each lesson. In the southwest region, teachers are also concerned about recording outstanding results for their pupils who have been subjected to the nearly three-month imposed COVID-19 break. As they ensure that the pupils are guided through past examination questions, they also work towards encouraging them to wear their face masks and to abide by hygiene rules while at school. Charles Abono tells us more. Adherence to the anti-COVID-19 measures recommended by the WHO and the Cameroonian government is very much evident when one visits schools across Boya. Temperature measurements taken at the gate every morning. We have um, buckets of water for washing of hands and soap. And then we have these buckets placed in front of all the the classrooms. Teachers are outside trying to observe the movement of the children. We don't allow them to go out twice, uh, two, two at once. Adherence to the anti-COVID-19 measures in schools in Boya is not without challenges. The students themselves don't seem to see that uh, this disease exists. And so from time to time, you have to go shouting after them to respect their distances. However, there are strategies in place to respond to these problems adequately. We have a focal point for COVID control in school as a principal duty to once in a while move to see what is going on as far as uh, the respect of these measures are concerned. School officials in the southwest region have expressed their determination to keep the COVID-19 at bay in their institutions by continuing to strictly respect the barrier measures. Non-governmental organizations and other stakeholders in the health sector have been playing a tremendous role to provide items that protect the population from the coronavirus. This has been compounded by the special gifts of President Paul Bia Hild by the medical personnel. However, they decried a surge in infections as 376 persons have tested positive today. Baldwin Summer is at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center with What's New. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Esther. The more the days unfold, the more Kamunyans have themselves screened, and the more we have an increase in the number of persons tested positive for COVID-19 in the country. And this Saturday is not an exception, given that we have 376 confirmed cases of Kamunyans infected with COVID-19. I should say that 2,025 samples were collected and tested, and out of these 2,025 samples, we have these 376 persons tested. 
positive for COVID-19 in the country this Saturday. And equally this Saturday, we have 13 Camunians who have recovered from COVID-19 and two Camunians died of COVID-19 this Saturday. And public health experts tell us that these statistics concern uh, the different regions affected as far as the spread of COVID-19 is concerned. And tonight with our resource person, Dr. Eric Tanzi, who is a public health expert in the Ministry of Public Health, we wish to look at uh, uh, the medical follow-up results for persons who have recovered from COVID-19. Good evening, doctor. Yeah, good evening, buddy. Uh, uh, when an individual recovers from COVID-19, he or she is uh, subjected to a uh, medical checkup. When is that supposed to be effected? Yeah, normally, uh, buddy, you know, the incubation period for COVID-19 is 14 days, and it will be obvious that this individual have to wait to observe this period and go again for a retest so that it should be confirmed that he has been completely recovered with a negative result. And uh, individuals want to find out, are there other medical checkups apart from the normal one of after 14 days? Are there other uh, particular uh, checkups reserved for this person who must have recovered from COVID-19? Yeah, but then it must not necessarily be maybe other collection and diagnosis, but other care has to be follow up, especially on psychological counseling and follow up in terms that this individual should be able to be reintegrated within the society without being stigmatized by those who are around him, by equally counseling the individual well in order to go about his or her day-to-day -day activity while respecting the prescribed preventive measures, as you already know, as well as equally providing services with, especially with family members, in order not to put this individual on an exclusion. Thank you so much, Doctor, for being a guest on the 730 Newscast this evening during the traditional press briefing by public health experts of this emergency operation center. They use the opportunity to thank different donors, uh, partner organizations, and especially uh, the President of the Republic for COVID kids that have permitted the Ministry of Public Health in her ongoing uh, fight against COVID-19 to save as many lives as possible. They have cited uh, uh, ventilators, they have cited ambulances and equally respirators that will permit them to treat some peculiar cases of persons with uh, breathing difficulties and equally reminding Camunians that the screening for COVID-19 continues in the different regions of the country with an increase in the number of uh, screening centers and screening for COVID-19 is free of charge. So the take-home message from here is that uh, this Saturday, we have 376 persons tested positive for COVID-19 in the country. 13 Camunians have recovered from COVID-19, and two Camunians died of COVID-19 this Saturday. Back to you, Esther. Thanks very much, Baldwin, for those updates. Now we talk about devotion at work. The Garden Post 2019 Achievement Award has been recognized. The outstanding works of some Cameroonians in the political, economic and social affairs. At the events which promotes excellence, the president of the Cameroon Association of English-speaking journalists, Jude Vieben, hailed the initiative which spurs hard work. Victor Siga tells us more. It is the 17th edition of the Garden Post 2019 Achievement Award put in place since 2003. For this edition, winners drawn from all walks of life in 18 categories mounted the podium. Such categories as the Man of the Year, General Manager of the Year and Woman of the Year were awarded. The purpose of the Garden Post Achievement Award is to promote peace and national unity. And that is what we are going to continue to be doing and that, we are, that is what we have been doing for the past 17 years. Among the winners figured the Prime Minister Head of Government, His Excellency Chief Dr. Joseph John Guti, Honored the man of the year, Ashidi Judith Yar Sondi of Camtel, as the woman of the year, and Lucrez Medu Jemba from CRTV Production Center, who received the prize of best TV presenter, all represented. I am actually short of words, but I think uh, it's really, really a pleasure to represent a model, a role model in the journalism profession like Lucrez Medu. I'm happy that she's a winner of this award. Camtel is actually undergoing transfiguration. Camtel is undergoing reforms. The objective of the company, as of course you know, is to put the customers at the center of our preoccupations. Present at Guardian Post annual award ceremony 
were high personalities in the political, economic, and social sectors. It was spies with traditional dances. In other news, today is International Albinism Awareness Day to celebrate the human rights of persons with albinism. Commemorated on the theme Made to Shine, it highlights the achievements and successes of people with albinism in spite of the challenges that come with their condition. Tonight, we profile 50-year-old Etienne Marcelbia, who, regardless of the color of his skin and other forms of discrimination against him, continues to shine. He is one of the key voices for people with albinism in the South region. Etienne Masembia, in his 50s, has gone beyond the prejudices and difficulties of life imposed by his skin color. It takes a lot of effort and counseling for most families to accept children with albinism. People call us all sorts of names, like Ngengeru, Nasara, Fake White. This really frustrates. Very few of us manage to go beyond primary school. This native of Ngulmakong in the villa, sufferer of the genetic disorder, says the daily thorns from childhood have never stopped him from aiming high. Stigmatization starts from childhood. I work hard to prove to everyone that beyond the skin color, I'm like any other human capable of doing what others do. Etienne Masembia has managed to go on through secondary school and other higher institutions of learning to a career with the Cameroon Telecommunications Company, Camtel. The state has enabled us to go to school. It's but normal that we too should be appointed or given posts of responsibility. Etienne's message to many is that albinism is not a curse, and as such, albinos should not be cast out by their own families, but rather they should be supported, for they are made to shine. And that will be all for the 7.30 news tonight. But before we go, a recap of our major stories. The 2020 state budget has been modified to check the ravaging effects of the novel coronavirus pandemic. A 180 billion CFA France special fund has been created to trace COVID-19 cases and to provide for care for the vulnerable people and also for street children. Disposing items used for the care of treatment of COVID-19 cases has been preoccupying health experts as they pose a threat to contamination and medical personnel prescribe caution in their management for the protection of humans and the environment. And finally, health districts have been equipped with surgical beds and medical equipment to stall the spread of the coronavirus as persons of goodwill continue to reach out with face masks and other protective kits for the population. More news comes up at 8.30 p.m. You'll be in the company of Karin Olivia Bitt. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. God willing. Thanks for staying tuned to our programs on the CRTV. Stay safe. And good night. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing. CRTV News, ici, toute l'info.